Hello guys, welcome to the new lesson about grunt. I want to keep this video very practical, since uh, before we have learned already how grunt works, uh, what it is and how to install it, how to create your own simple task, but we haven't yet tried to build some real build file that will bring an actual use to your application. So to fix that, we have this video. So today our goal is to automate a bit a typical client-side application that I have assembled for this purpose. So before we start speaking about our minimalistic tasks, let's see what kind of application we have here. So here's the app. It's already running on port 3 Solvent for me. It is built with uh, Node.js at server-side, Express.js uh, powering the uh, server-side uh, app. And it represents a simple a catalog of books. If you click on a book, you go to a book page and see some more details and uh, uh, comments uh, form. So this is a very really minimalistic basic uh, catalog application built with Angular, Bootstrap and jQuery. It also has tests, of course, and I'm using Jasmine to uh, run unit tests. If you're not familiar with Jasmine, if you used the different unit testing framework, that is okay, since the build procedure for different unit testing frameworks almost the same. So Jasmine is just quite typical and popular example of how to run and uh, write your unit tests. So here I have tests, they are all green, meaning my application is healthy. Now let's give a quick look at the structure of my application. I have two folders, client for client-side app and server for server-side Node.js app. We're not interested in Node.js for this video. Our main goal is to automate this part, which is a client. And client has uh, several folders with JavaScript is the interesting folder with sources. Test is a folder with test specifications for Jasmine. And finally, BND is a folder with uh, vendor specific downloaded uh, frameworks and modules. So what I want to do in this video is build a simple grunt file that can automatically run JS hint to check my code quality as well as unit testing with Jasmine. And to make it even more fun, I will make grunt watch the file system and once one of the files in my source folder is modified, rerun the test automatically so that I get an immediate feedback and response if I have introduced any new bugs or everything is still good. So let's do that. And our first task will be to run unit tests with grunt. So the first thing to do is to install the required task, which is grunt contrib jasmine. Here's the uh, web page of this task. And here, by the way, you can see all sort of different configuration and samples of uh, configs for grunt. In this video, I will just use the basic example, a typical configuration, but if you need something extra, feel free to go to that page and have a look what, has, uh, what this task has to propose. So the first thing to do is to do npm install. Don't forget to save dev because it will save to your package JSON and your peers will also have this dependency automatically. And the name of the module that we're looking for is grant country Jasmine. Okay, so NPM will install this module in a second. It's not interesting. And we can go here and start configuring uh, this task. So the first thing to do is to load this task. Load NPM tasks and pass the task name grant country jasmine now the task is loaded so here in the configuration we'll create a block for this task named the same as the task itself and here we will add the configuration for jasmine so what a typical unit testing framework needs to know to run its tests? Well, just few location of files. Firstly, it needs to know where to find the application files themselves. Secondly, it needs to know where to find the specs, the test files. 
And finally, it needs to know where to find uh, vendor-specific uh, files like frameworks and libraries that we have used in our project. So with those three configured, Jasmine can run the test and show you the results in a browser. So let's do that. Let's configure Jasmine to run our tests. So Jasmine can group different files in different groups. So you can separate, for example, your client side code from your server side code or uh, separate the long running tests from short running tests, small tests from uh, heavy tests. For this video, we'll have just one group. I'll call it sources. This name is arbitrary. You can put here. And source is where to find the files with the source code of the app is in client js or it is its subfolders this pattern means subfolders everything that ends up with js so basically this pattern will refer all the files in my client js folders in controllers filters services app js everything now other parts of configuration will go to the options object so inside these options i need to uh, tell Angular, or sorry, tell Jasmine where to find specs, which is here. Specs are located in client, test, and its subfolders, everything ending with spec.js. So if you look at the structure of my application, you'll see that all the spec files, all the test files, end with spec.js. And here's how we locate them all. Finally, we need to load the vendor-specific frameworks and libraries. I will not waste lots of your time typing that in. So uh, briefly, what I have here is jQuery, AngularJS, couple of Angular modules, and Bootstrap. So having all that loaded, I can start my application, load my application, and run the tests. So with this configuration, Jasmine is already they are already configured to run our tests. Let's try to use it. Grunt. Jasmine, hit enter. And you see the Phantom JS, which is a headless browser, running my tests. And it also reports that my application is uh, working just fine. So what to do next? Well, you remember that in Grunt there is a notion of default task, so that you don't have to remember what exactly were the names of the tasks inside. And it's a good idea to configure the default task straight away. Let's do that. Grunt register task, pass the name default, and secondly, the array of tasks to run. So the task that I will run is Jasmine. Perfect. Now you can run the same test with just calling grunt, no parameters. Super. Now I can change my code and once I hit uh, grunt, once I call grunt from a command line, I will get an immediate feedback if the tests still work or they do not. Now, in the same manner, I would love the immediate feedback on how well my code goes. And for that, I will use JS hint. So let's add the next task to our build and configure it in the similar manner to uh, Jasmine. So we'll execute npm install with a flag save dev as usual and we'll install grunt contrib js hint. Hit enter. So js hints hint is working in the same way. We need to create a JS hint key here to part the configuration and here we'll create an options object that accepts several parameters. You can uh, basically set here what kind of behavior do you want from uh, JS hint. So uh, if you're not aware uh, of how JS hint works, it has several rules that it checks. For example, you can uh, say that you care about useless uh, semicolons, right? So if you have a useless semicolon in your code, JS hint will warn you. So for this particular build, I will pass several options to JS hint to tune it just in the way that I would like for my project and to show you how it works in practice. 
I will pass a parameter called browser, giving a hint to JS hint that we are working in a browser environment. And secondly, I will pass a second option to a globals. Globals is the object that contains all the libraries that we refer globally. Globals is, we have globally jQuery, so we pass jQuery to. Now, the second argument is files, is a group of files that we want to hint. And files is just the name of the group, like, like here, like sources. Let's, let's actually call it sources as well. And src will give the, get the same value as the uh, client uh, pattern here. Basically, since these patterns are all the same, it is a good idea to maybe create a variable here to, to, to not copy-paste the code. So client files pattern equals this thing. And now I can use client files pattern here and client files pattern here or like this. Okay, so now JS hint is also ready to rock. And the last thing to do is not to forget to load it, JS hint. Let's run grunt JS hint and see if our code is okay. So six files, which is my source files, saying lint free, which is good. Let's just for the sake of example, let's let's add some sort of a problem to some file. Let's let's forget to put a semicolon here and rerun JS hint. And it will say that here is missing semicolon and fail the build overall. So build will not continue. And here is the small pointer to uh, line 10 in my file book service JS. Here's exactly where I removed my semicolon. So now if we want to run both JS hint and uh, Jasmine, we can call grunt Jasmine JS hint. That's one way. So both are good. Done without errors means that the whole build passed. Or alternatively, we can go back to our grunt file and say that the default task for grunt is Jasmine and JS hint, both. So now grunt will run those in sequence. And if I call it without any parameters at all, like this, grunt, it will do exactly the same thing. But now I don't have to uh, remember what were the, the name of default tasks. So it works as a charm and it's quite useful already. That's kind of minimalistic, uh, useful build of grunt. But now it would be even cooler to make Grunt watch the file system and uh, run those tasks over and over again once it detects the change in one of the important files. So let's implement that final part of our build and see how it works. So as usual, I start from downloading the task, the module, npm install Grunt contrib watch should be there in a second now here i will load this task load npm task grunt contrib watch and finally here in the configuration i can configure this new task so watch will get the following configuration. As usual, watch works with the groups of files and we pass one such group, which I'll call again sources. So a sources group will have following files, which is client files pattern. Uh, next, we need to tell which tasks to run once one of these file files changes. We will run Jasmine and JS hint, both. Finally, we can test this build file and see how it will work. Grunt watch, hit enter. 
and see what happens. So nothing really happens, but build stays uh, running without completion. So this build will not really ever complete. It will just stay there, sit in this tab in my terminal and wait for a file to change. So now I will try to arrange the windows so that you see both the, uh, the terminal and my source files like this. And now I will try to change one of the source files. So book service JS will get this great change. This is a sample comment. I save this file and look what happens in the terminal window. So Grunt just detected that there was a change in uh, the file system and it prints file client GS services book service GS changed and now it runs in the sequence the uh, tasks that I have registered inside a watch. So it runs Jasmine tests, tests pass and finally it runs GS hint and hint also pass. Now uh, grunt build is still there, it's still running, and it waits again for another change. And if I change a file again and hit Control S, Grunt again detects that and reruns all the tests. Well, in a real scenario when you have a huge application with loads of file, uh, it might not be the best strategy to rerun all the tests one you once you uh, hit Control S, but at least uh, this is a nice tool to get a quick feedback on your tests, especially when you're hacking with some sort of a prototypes. So this sort of a build is a minimal useful grunt build and let's now have a quick summary of this video, what we just did and how you can assemble the similar build for yourself. So we have created a build that includes three separate tasks that we have downloaded through NPM, which is Jasmine, Watch and JS Hint. Jasmine is a test runner that uses Phantom GS, a headless browser inside to uh, run the test and report the results back to Grunt. Uh, JS Hint is a hint uh, library that checks the style of the code and warns you about the typical errors. And finally, Watch is a Grunt watcher that uh, make sure that once you change one of the important files, you rerun those uh, tasks again. So a quick summary how to install the task and configure it. We start from downloading it from npm with a command like npm install save dev and then task name. Default tasks start with grunt contrib. Then we add the task to a build with grunt load npm tasks. Finally, inside the task configuration, we add a configuration block in init config and tell whatever the task is required to know. So in order to find the documentation of how tasks works, you don't have to memorize all those options since it's quite hard. We go to grunt page, find the plugin that we need, open the plugins page and scroll around to read what kind of options does this task support and what can you get from it. In the next video, we'll learn more about how Grunt works and we'll learn about a feature of Grunt called multitasks. See you in the next videos.